amazing. I like pushing from the back because I think everyone has an opportunity to be great. Mm. You know, and if they just need somebody to come alongside them to help them lift them up, you know, pick them up and encourage them. Mm. And that's why I love ushering. And I kept telling myself, I want to be that. Because every time you wake up, God, what can I do for you? You know, how can I please you? And that's, that, that scripture always come back without faith is impossible to please. You know, what is, what, where is my faith involved in this where I can stand on my faith and know that God hears me mm-hmm. and that whatever's going on, God's got me, you know? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Winning Conversations Podcast. I am Eric, and we have one of the OGs, Andy. Hey. Hey. And we also have Tony and Rhonda Jordan. How y'all Welcome doing? Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, good. Thank you. It's We're good to have great. y'all here. Y'all yeah. a blessing. Y'all a blessing. Uh, I remember my There's first. There's some OGs, too. Yeah, they are. Actually, yeah. Yeah, some heritage OGs. 14 yeah. years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 14. Got your stripes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember my first encounter with Tony, Uh, my wife and I, and I'll make it real quick. My wife and I moved here in 2016. We didn't have a place to stay. We were living in a hotel. It might be TMI, but you just heard it. We uh, (laughs) are living in a hotel, Uh, but we we went to church and it was very, very temporary, but we went to church uh, previously before that. And when we got to the hotel, um, Tony had already given us his number and he was like, Hey man, call me if you need something, call me if you need something. So I'm like, God, how can we get to Wednesday night service? And he's like, call Tony. So I called Tony. He took us. And after service, he took us a tour around Burleson. <laughs> so That's amazing. It was, it was a blessing. So I appreciate you and your wife. You know, uh, you've been a blessing. So with, within the 14 years, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to, to the church? All right. The church we was attending, they was going through a transition. So, and Lavondra was starting school out in Burleson. So we decided we need to be more diversified as far as the church we're in. Uh-huh. So we got... A member of the church told us about heritage, and we came, and Justin McKay was preaching on a Wednesday night. Jason? Jason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jason McKay was yeah. preaching on a Wednesday night, and it was awesome. Mm. And we both said to ourselves, I wonder what the pastor sound like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. It was and, uh, it was so, and next thing you know, we came back on a Sunday and heard Pastor Justin, and it was amazing. Wow. You're here ever since. Yeah, been, been here ever, ever since. since. I do love how diverse our congregation is we've said this on the podcast before like Mm -hmm. the age like every like there's just so many different types of people in there and i Mm -hmm. feel like that's such a representation of heaven and i just Mm -hmm. love that about our church yeah what kind of roles have y'all been in as far as volunteering because tony is our head usher our lead yeah. What other? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. You are. What other uh, roles have y'all been in while you were here? I've been a um, a greeter. Mm-hmm. I was a greeter for a while, um, and I kind of stepped down from that. We've been thrive group leaders. Um, mm-hmm. Pastors had us in positions where we just went out and he had us mentoring couples, and uh-huh. just yeah, I don't know. We've done a lot. We've done a lot here in the church. Just. I'm 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 more in the background. Mm. Tony's more up front. And he meets everybody knows him. Yeah, oh, yeah. everyone and, and, sees his face. Yeah, oh, yeah. and then when he, when people when I say I'm Tony's wife, Tony, oh, he has a wife. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. I'm serious. And yeah, 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 oh, yeah. God. But a lot of people got to meet her at Thrive Group because right. we had the. I want to say the mature crowd. Oh, yeah, the crowd. Yeah, was, we, we had, we had that crowd, crowd. You know, yeah, so uh, yeah. and yeah. we used to. I mean, we had a great where people come through the house. I mean, yeah. um, it was just amazing to have so many mature Christians, mm-hmm. and we just walked through the Word of God when mm-hmm. we were starting our Thrive Group, and it was a, it was amazing. Yeah, And it's still amazing when we go visit other Thrive Groups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just closed ours up, you know, but we go visit other Thrive Groups, and it's amazing just to see the people, yeah. you know, love on God and love each other. Yeah, yeah. And so um, serving people uh, is something, obviously, that y'all are doing. How impactful or how big um, is that as far as a part of your lives? Whew. It's amazing. I like pushing from the back because I think everyone has an opportunity to be great. Uh-huh. You know, and if they just need somebody to come alongside them to help them lift them up, you know, pick them up and encourage them. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love ushering. You know, yeah. I get yeah. to meet a lot of people, get to love on them when they walk through the door. 
you know, and when they leave, we get to say goodbye, you know. It's yeah. just amazing when you get to serve people. Yeah. And, I mean, some people just need to hear someone say, hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, have a great day. You yeah. know, a welcome home. I love that phrase, welcome yeah. home when they come into church. Yeah. You yeah. know, so people just need that, and they just feel more relaxed. Yeah. Well, also, you're kind of like the first impression to the church, which mm -hmm. no pressure, but <laughs> you know what I mean? When someone walks in, greeters and the ushers, those are the people who are making the first impression of what that's the true. church is before mm -hmm. they even hear the word. Mm -hmm. So that's just such an important like position oh, yeah. to be in. Yeah, I would agree. And, and to, to your point, you were saying like, uh, just how, what you say to people is important. You always say, Hey, come on in family. <laughs> come on in family. You're always saying that, yeah. which I think is a big part, especially let's say if you're the first time a person has ever come in and you say welcome family, which at this church it really does feel like family. I mean, yeah, you're accepted does. like you've been here for years as soon as you come in. So I think that's a big part. And y'all are y'all have been in, you know, well Tony definitely in leadership position because any serving position in the church is seen as a leadership position. Could you share a little bit more of how that has affected you in your walk and um, just like what the what the Lord is teaching you through being a leader within the church? Well, me and myself personally, uh, God has just showed me that the walk that I have with him mm -hmm. is also for me to help build other people up. Mm -hmm. You know, as in the position of head usher, I don't see myself as head usher. I just see myself as a brother serving my other brothers and sisters in the house. That's good. And that's how I teach the guys who follow behind me. You know, all we're doing is serving the people in the house. It's, like, it, it's really not serving. It's not even working. Yeah. All you're doing is just loving on people. Yeah, yeah. You know? that's good. And we said hurting people in this world, and we just, God called us to love on them. That's what Ms. Curlin, yeah. what God told her to open the church for, hurting right. people in this world, just love them for me. Right. And that's the same thing we do as ushers. You know, we pe people get ushered in through the greeters, well, it started in the parking lot. We got amazing yeah. parking lot yeah. people who wave them in, yes. you know, and once they get <laughs> through the parking lot, <laughs> they come through, the, the greeters meet them, we love on them, and then they pass them on to us. Yeah. And from our position, we help them get seats. You know, we direct traffic in the church, in the yeah. sanctuary. Basically, basically, we protect the anointing in the house. Yes. yes. You know, so That's pastor important. don't have to worry about anything but just delivering the message. Yes. Yeah. We do everything else. We just make sure people get comfortable, you know, babies. <laughs> we got to usher them in and around the sanctuary, oh you know. So, uh, oh. you know. There's so. no small position. Every position has such a powerful meaning behind it. Yes. It does. From the parking yeah. lot to the ushers to the they all have it such really a powerful does. meaning behind them. Yeah. And it really it's just does. encouraging and loving on people. Just think if you can just get the stress off them when they come in and just give them an opportunity just to receive what they need right. from the house. Right. You know, and that's our job as ministries of help. Yeah. You know, yeah. just take the stress away. Just come in and just let them, like I said, welcome home. Yeah. You know, get comfortable. You know, I even tell some, take your shoes off, run around. You know, whatever <laughs> yeah. the spirit tells you to do, lead you. Just get comfortable. Because when you're comfortable, you can receive. Yeah, that's good. Do you, you really know? want people taking their shoes off? They can. No, I was thinking about that. Yes, they can. Just be late. If they, yeah, they just no, be late. No, no. <laughs> just be late. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, we want them to come to a possible so they can actually yeah. receive. We're joking. We're, yeah. We're, yeah. You know. yeah. We if you want to come in your pajamas, you're totally uh -huh. welcome to. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> appropriate time. Yeah, appropriate yeah. time. Yes. You know, Please. but we want them to be comfortable enough to receive. We want yes. to receive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody That's here, <laughs> awesome. You know, all the team members are awesome. They want to serve, you know, and That's good. It's, it's fun, you know, serving when you just get out your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. The biggest yes. thing is getting That's people true. out yes. their comfort zone and just relax, you know, That's just true. everybody's family. And yeah. when you dress it like yeah. that, it's okay. That's true. You know? There's less pressure on coming to church or not coming to church, but you know what I mean? Being part of team, there's less pressure if you're comfortable with everybody and you love True. who you're serving yes. alongside. Mm -hmm. If you treat them as family, then it's going to feel like that. Mm -hmm. Like you're just at a family party. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, every, yeah, every Sunday. And you're here every Sunday, every Wednesday, like you are always serving. Always. So you, I mean, Especially when really leaving, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, you know, it's time to go on a Wednesday. Tony will come in and say, "All right," <laughs> very gently. Hey, 
All right. Got Praise go. God. Yeah. <laughs> One day he asked me, he said, you locking up? <laughs> and I was like, I don't have a key. Well, we need to go home. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I understood it. I was like, you're right. We need to go. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. Yeah. At least uh, can't stay in the building while I'm locking the door. <laughs> right. yeah. The parking lot, okay. You know, but, you, know yeah. you do you do your, you do your service with excellence. That's the biggest thing I've seen. Yes. You know, um, yes. Definitely. That's, that's a definite thing. and yeah, No doubt about it. And for the two of you, ministry of health is, as we were saying, a major part mm -hmm. of what's going on. And I think sometimes people don't see it. It's It, it could go unnoticeable. Because you think, oh, yes. somebody just opened the door for me. Somebody just saying hi for me. But no, they're preparing you and making you feel welcome yes. and open. Yes. And I would encourage those. Or is there anything, actually, I'll ask y'all, anything that you would share with someone who may be either looking for a place to serve within the church or it's been on their mind about being a part of ministry of helps in any way, what is a highlight we can say that, hey, you know, if God is leading you to do it, you know, this is just some information for you to be encouraged. Do y'all have anything like that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. I would say it's an opportunity for you to meet people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it. Most people won't serve outside the house of the church, of, of church Yeah. you know, but they could come in and start serving here. Mm -hmm. If God is trying to get you to move, start here in a friendly environment. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's good. It'll be comfortable here before you tell you to go lay hands on somebody out in the streets. That's, that's good. good. You know? That's good. That's yeah, really good. it's easier to come here where the word the anointing is high and yes. everybody else is praying for people and laying high right. hands on them. You know, before you go, learn to walk here before you go run. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's the serve in the house is the best opportunity in the growing process. Yeah. That's so good. that's what that's I would really say. good. That's really good. Well, if you're looking for a place to serve, yes. Yes. shameless plug. Yes. 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 And she had never been on an airplane before. And she said she felt that she was called to go on this mission trip. So we met with Pastor and Annette and kind of talked to them about it. And they were like, sure, sure. You know, if she said that that's what God wants her to do, then we want her to go. You know, and I'm just like, oh, sure. <laughs> and this is my baby. And she's going overseas without uh, me. Yeah. And, um, I mean, she went. And she had an awesome time. And Annette, Where'd she go? She went to Africa, to Tanzania. Then yeah. she followed up and she went to Guatemala after that. She just, she caught the, the international bug. She was just <laughs> ready. She's ready to go. Wow. But I mean, when she went over there, they were sending me, Pastor Annette was sending me pictures of her. She has like this, some kind of gentle spirit with babies. And then she sent a picture of me with holding somebody's baby from a service. And she was outside comforting this baby doing service. Mm. And I'm just like, whose baby is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, what a whole child. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, she, That's she, cool. she just, she, she loves people and she loves helping people. So it was amazing to let her go and be able to see once she got there, she said she had a vision to go back and to help to start, you know, a ministry, to be a wow. midwife there, to open up a birth center. Wow, so she's currently saying. in school to be a midwife. And yeah, so she's, yeah, she's, she's really, her heart is there. Yeah. Even amazing. Bef yeah, before she got married, she told her husband, hope you like to travel. <laughs> I plan to go back to Africa. I'm just like, okay. And babies. And babies, yeah. <laughs> wow. That is Mission great. trips really do mark you. It's a yeah, it's a whole other it's a whole other field and it really does mark you. Yeah. for life. Um you mentioned uh about how Lavandra is connected with um babies and things of that sort and I, my understanding is that uh there with the next pregnancy center there is a certain connection that you have with that can you um, talk a little bit more about your involvement with that? sure sure next step uh women's center it's in burleson um they see um mothers that come in that are pregnant they do pregnancy tests they do sonograms um we pray for pray over you know the people that come in we would start the mornings with prayer i was the um was I there, the director of client services for about seven, eight years. And uh, it was just amazing to be a part of that. I started as a volunteer, mm -hmm. just going in. I was fresh out of Bible school, and I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And it came up, and I was just like, 
there's no pay in this. Oh. <laughs> Are you <laughs> sure? Yeah, yeah. And my husband, of course, is always like, you know, if that's what God wants you to do, then, you know, yeah. we're going to do it. So yeah, yeah. I went and, you know, after a year, I think they offered me a position and I started working wow. there. So, so sowing seeds. Yes. Of course, there was no pay, but you sowing <laughs> seeds. Yes, the Lord definitely. has opened the door for that. Definitely. And it was a blessing to me, too. You know, just being there, meeting those young women and watching what they grow through, go through and being able to share the gospel with them. That's it's so the impactful. It is so impactful. And I love that we're still connected with them after all yes. these years. Yeah. You've done so much. And I think it was because you were so willing to stay and help with the pregnancy center and you were very involved there that you brought it here and we were able to expand it into what it is here at the church now even though you might not be involved with the pregnancy center anymore mm -hmm. it helped us grow that relationship and now we have embraced grace we just did a pregnancy walk with them and all of those different things were because of that connection yes. with you right well it started there um i once I was there and in the position that I was in, I've met with Annette a few times, you know, about the things that were going on. And she would always ask me, how can we be involved? Yeah. How can we get involved? And I think there was a lot going on back then and I'm, I'm not there anymore, mm -hmm. but you know, that has nurtured into other people here at the church that are volunteering there at the center yeah. and working there at the center. And they've, you know, created this culture between the church and the center. Which is awesome to think about like, a position that you're in could help grow something and help it flourish into, oh, yeah. you that know, awesome. yeah, yeah, that's all. I mean, that's amazing. And, and, and for those who don't know really much about Embrace Grace, could you embellish for the song? Well, Embrace Grace here is we basically sponsor, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure this right. is what we're doing. We're sponsoring women and bringing them in and mentoring them. And we give them baby showers. And we, you know, these are women who maybe don't, the fathers aren't in the picture, or maybe they're just needing some extra support, which I can relate there. You know, they come in and we really just walk beside them through their pregnancy and then beyond too. And yes. we've housed a, a lot of amazing young women who are pregnant, who are just needing extra support mm -hmm. and that's what embrace grace is and that's what we have here so yes yeah. and for like as an outsider looking in seeing when that program was introduced in church some time ago i thought and seeing the testimonies from that i mm -hmm. thought that was very amazing actually that we are involved in such a thing right uh, because uh well especially now especially uh, now where there's a, I mean, there's a lot of pressure as a young woman when you get pregnant or when you, you know, and, and I wasn't going to tell this story, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell it because I feel like I should. Sure. Um, when I was pregnant at, I was 18, I went to the pregnancy center and I got support from them and I embrace grace wasn't created yet here or we weren't having it here at the church yet, but the pregnancy center opened their doors to me and I was able to go in and get support and get a sonogram because I was, I mean, I was that woman. I was that girl. You know what I mean? So it's just, and you were there. I was. I was there. So thank you for being a part of <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And look, 11 years later, <laughs> really? look where we are. Good. Um, so we all know that um, Dr. Savelle has transitioned to a new home. He he, he, he went out of town, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he'll be, you know, we'll, we'll see each other again. Amen. Um, uh, what has he with everything that he has ministered to us over the years and over the 14 years that y'all have been here, what uh, is one thing that you could say that he has instilled into your lives? No, go ahead. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. So I want to please God. And I saw Brother Savelle pleasing God by his faith, his word, his message. And I kept telling myself, I want to be that. Because every time you wake up, God, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I please you? You know, and that's that 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 scripture always come back without faith is impossible to please. Him. So as far as I can say, Dr. Vale just pleases God and I want to be in that same arena. Yeah. I want to please God. I want God to use me in a mighty way. You know, I want to be that instrument that changed someone else's life. Mm. Amen. That's good. That's yeah. good. And for me, just his faith walk. Mm -hmm. Just walking by faith and everything. It's taught me a lot. It's taught me to, you know, Watch the words that, that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to read that in the word of God, but when you have somebody that's teaching you that, mm -hmm. and then they come back and they 
teach it to you again and they teach it to you again evidently there's something in that that they're wanting you to get from right. it you know right. Right. right so that it gets down inside of you so it becomes a part of you mm -hmm. you know and so now instead of saying oh you know this is happening and woe is me and i what does the word say about it you know what is what where is my faith involved in this where i can stand on my faith and know that god hears me mm -hmm. and that whatever's going on god's got me you know yeah well, on every episode, we ask one question, which I'm sure you all have heard. But now it's your turn. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> what does making winners in life mean to you? Yes. Well, for me, it means loving people and sharing the word of God with people. Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of meet people where they, where they are, mm -hmm. you know, but being able to share the word and and to love on them it means a lot it means more sometimes than than we know and that could cause them to go on and do whatever it is that god may be calling them to do to become winners or to walk in you know the path yeah. to become winners mm, that's, that's, good. Good. that's good that's good yeah mine's on the same line but it's changing the trajectory of someone's life yeah. if you share the good news of the kingdom and they receive it with gladness and joy, they would be able to use that and catapult them in another direction or take them to a higher level in life. Yeah. And that would produce winners. You mm -hmm. know, anytime you can make a change in your life for the good with the word of God, you already winning. That's, that's good. good. You know? yes. That's good. Yeah. And that's what I would say here at Heritage, we making winners. Absolutely. Right. We are. That I good. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I love that. Well, thank you all so much for yeah, joining us. That was thank great. You, great conversation. And thank you, Heritage family, for tuning in. Come back next week for more winning conversations.